take home. Buenos dias. Hello, bonjour. Kehalha. <laughs> Salut. Don't <Bon> je. <laughs> How are you all doing? Welcome to uh, the Adam Josh Oral Brog episode number 57. Today we're going to put our big boy pants on and have a grown up conversation. You know, as much fun as it is to act childlike and uh, be. naive sort of in our understandings. I think uh, every once in a while we got to put on our big big people pants and uh, take on some tough issues. And uh, one of the issues that I want to talk about, uh, the main issue today is drugs, specifically what's going on in uh, the Mexico and uh, Mexico and the border of the southern United States. Now, I got a whole bunch of images and video to show, and I'm sort of he hesitant because they're super graphic, and I'm wondering if I should bother because this will probably be the most graphic thing I've ever posted on YouTube with my name on it and I'm I'm not the type of person who's ignorant of the world that I live in I've seen quite a lot of things in my life and I don't think that because you see damaging things or because you see horrible things that it makes you an evil person. I think over time it would sort of maybe desensitize some people, but um, if you're one of those people who believe in a creator or, or a higher power, then you believe that your higher power or creator is aware of all these super negative things that are going on as well as the good things and somehow still exists, you know. So it doesn't make you a horrible person to know about the creepy crazy things that go on in the world um drugs let's talk about drugs there's a lot of conflicts going on in Mexico between the various cartels over drugs I mean rival drug gangs uh, and huge cartels like Los Zetas and La Familia and uh, there's another few and then they fight with the police and out of uh, there's a there's a story coming out of the states where the ATF E or the ATF was caught in uh, this program Fast and Furious sending drug sending guns to Mexico like Florida California as well but specifically to Mexico and they're saying well we were sending these guns in so we could track where they were going now this is the type of government that we're dealing with it's not bad enough that CIA jets have been found crashed with tons of cocaine on them it's that's it's not bad enough that Geraldo Rivera is interviewing the troops and the Marine Colonel is standing there saying it really grinds my gears and turns my gut that we're helping these Afghanistanis grow the opium here but this is their way of life and this is how they do it and the Muslims there say well there's a provision in the Quran that says if you're starving or your children are starving then you can eat pork so we sort of look at it like that and we're starving we don't have any money we don't have any way of life so we're growing opium meanwhile the soldiers are all getting hooked on opium and bringing it back here to this continent 
la da 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 it's a really really big money making business and if you think that anybody can turn a blind eye to the amount of money that comes along with the drug trade if you think that businessmen can turn a blind eye to that you're pretty crazy you have to have some pretty even the people who have like moral reservations against this massive amounts of money in drug dealing they'll just get somebody else to do it you know? so anyway uh, these cartel people that have been caught recently what uh, in uh, in Fast and Furious they're saying yeah the government the, the United States government helped us and delivered us these guns and helped facilitated all these transactions so it's a creepy shady big mess and you need to put on your big boy pants and look at this properly and not be so naive as to think that the United States government and other governments of the world are involved in a global drug trade and work with the cartels using the police as well to get rid of competition so you got to keep all these things in mind and it's crazy like the things that are going on are crazy and all of this is sort of directly resulted uh, because cocaine heroin marijuana are illegal and before the 1930s that wasn't that way you could buy opium and opiates in pharmacies uh, cocaine was uh, an ingredient in coca-cola you could buy cocaine uh, tooth uh, tooth lozenges for your gums and teeth and um, hemp in the hemp industry uh, was competing for the market with uh, the paper factories and the paper mills and all that and so competition is a sin right according to David Rockefeller so somebody in the end of the day won that competition and it wasn't uh, hemp manufacturers or people that could uh, grow it and supply it I personally just to let you everybody know here I personally don't do drugs I uh, my I guess caffeine I sort of is a drug I've had a Red Bull today although you couldn't tell by looking at me um, I don't drink I'm turning 30 in a few months uh, two months and it's always been my plan to uh, cut out all my what I consider bad habits by the time I was 30 so the last one to go for me is caffeine so I'm sort of debating whether or not to have a few drinks on the night of my birthday but that's still up for debate so that's two months away so maybe in two months I'll have a few drinks and that'll be the last time but I, I don't drink and I don't do drugs and most people who are who are musicians or ha who have valid passports you know, it's funny these big gangsters talking about how tough they are and you know Fred Durst killing people and all these rappers you know blah 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 they can't be that bad otherwise they wouldn't be able to have passports and travel intercontinentally and off the continent so you know I value my passport and my right to be able to travel freely as long as I can have it so I uh, and the smarter musicians uh, I'm not that smart I guess but the smarter musicians even if they were doing drugs or illegal things they would never admit to it publicly this being a public forum me videotaping this and putting it on YouTube so I'd be like you know if I was one of them I'd be like well no I, I've never even touched this stuff I have no idea what you're talking about that's what m most musicians do that I know whereas me I'll admit yeah I've done a lot of drugs in the past especially when I was younger but it was like a cultural thing when I was growing up like in high school I don't know how I could have avoided it I was smoking when I was like seven eight years old and everybody in in like my school that I went to we would smoke weed outside of breaks and I've never never really fond of weed I never bought that much weed I live with a good friend who smoke, smoked and probably still does smoke weed every day and uh, I think I bought weed maybe two or three times I was never really into weed weed's not my thing it was never my thing even back then I tried uh, 
I tried what somebody told me was cocaine. I don't know if it was or not. And I just tried like a line or two. And uh, I remember just talking a lot. And and uh, that was it. Um, I did acid. That was a lot of fun uh, when I was 18. And it's just everybody was around me doing it. I'm not giving any excuses, but that's just how it was. Luckily, I was never around any anything really too hard like heroin. So I, I've never tried heroin, and I'm sort of glad that I didn't. I'm definitely afraid of needles, so. Um, I was in the hospital one time, and the lady was trying to give me um, a needle, and she was like, wow, your skin is really rough, and actually the needle wouldn't go in. So that's sort of a funny story. So she had to, like, really, like, jab it in. I'm like, yeah, I got tough skin. And she's like, no, literally, you have tough skin. So the drug situation here. I'm not, so to say all that, I don't do drugs, haven't done them in years, don't want to, and all that being said, um, I can see the allure, I would never ta I would never want to take away anybody's right, uh, if they want to smoke weed, to smoke weed, I think that all the negative stuff that comes along with making it illegal uh, isn't worth whatever you think that you're gaining out of uh, weed and other drugs being illegal. I'm not saying, well, we should legalize weed because then everybody can do heroin or whatever, but look at the damage that this prohibition has done. And we're going to, this is one of the reasons I wanted to do this video today, is to actually look at the damage that prohibition has done. And how many people need to be killed and how much, like the war on drugs, is that successful? No, 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 no matter how much money is dumped into this war on drugs, it's still phony because the government ultimately is running it at the highest levels. And uh, maybe it's hard for you to believe, but do some research and you'll see exactly what I see. Government, government agencies, government jets, uh, smashing with tons of cocaine on them, governments facilitating gun and drug running all over the world, and at the same time fighting it, like creating the enemy and then fighting the enemy at the same time, like they do with Al-Qaeda, right? So, drug, and then aside from drugs being illegal, the, that there's another whole point to it, is that major banks, get money from these major drug dealers and they use, they launder their money through big banks and the big bank shareholder sh the big banks also are the sh major shareholders or directly own a lot of the prisons so you do the drugs the illegal drugs that the government or secret black government helped you or facilitated you to get and then when you get caught doing them, the local police enforce the laws that it's still illegal and you go to jail and drive down uh, the local wage because you're working for 25 cents an hour or whatever, making license plates or whatever wage, whatever work they get you to do. And now you're in a prison system that uh, also is funded by taxpayers and they haven't figured out how much a year it, it uh, costs to keep somebody in prison. And that's taxpayer money paying that, so it's sort of a good business to be in. It's like a racket, right? You're, you're, it's for somebody who's just sort of looking at this whole uh, issue, like should drugs be illegal or illegal? That's sort of like a surface question to like a really sophisticated, multi-pronged operation. And as long as they can keep you in that small debate of should they be illegal or should they not be illegal, you're sort of missing the gigantic bigger picture of what is really going on, who's gaining, and all the disastrous effects of drugs like weed, cocaine, heroin being illegal. Another side to the racket at the same time as a side before we get into this super graphic stuff is okay heroin is illegal right and I'm you know 
I, I've seen a few heroin junkies. Uh, I've met a few. I know, like I used to work with, with some, and, uh, you know, one of my good close friends is, uh, and some of them are, other my other friends are from overseas where uh, that type of stuff has grown. So I've heard a lot of stories, and I've met a few people, so I see what it does to people, and I'm not... All that said, that's bad, right? That's bad. But Oxycontin, for those who it's prescribed for, is okay. Right, so big pharma can profit and make money off of chemically recreating these things and synthesize, synth, synthesizing, synth, synthesizing. Wow, doesn't help when you have a little bit of a lisp trying to say synthesizing. Synth, they can synthesize things like Percocets, Oxycontin. You know, you're. I'm sure that you're streetwise enough to, to know the, the type of street drugs in pill form that I'm talking about. And that's okay, right? It's abused, but still, Big Pharma is making all the money, so that's, that's cool. And that's legal, right? Uh, if you have a prescription. But heroin, opiates, marijuana, things that are, are illegal, that's, that's wrong, right? Now, weed can be grown a anywhere, and just imagine the difference. And I heard, I heard somebody say, uh, "Why don't they try it? Try legalizing it in a certain area, and and then you know do a test case, like one city or whatever, or one area, like a red light district or whatever. They see what happens. That's sort of assuming that." Me and you and people who are like, yeah, I mean, let's, let's try, are all on the same page as these government black op social elite, what elitists or whatever that are make, raking in billions and know it's a racket and know that it's better off being illegal to drive up the prices and use the police to squash their competition. So that's sort of assuming that we're all on the same page and we're not. There's people who know it's a racket who are doing this purposefully and willfully because of the business. So you're not going to get to agree with them. There's drug dealers who have been on camera saying like, well, I'm not, I don't want weed to be legal, then where would I, how would I make money? You can find YouTube videos of drug, literal drug dealers being like, I don't want weed to be legal. I don't want coke to be legal. I don't want crack to be legal. Where, where's my job then? If people are going to the store to buy it, where's the crack dealer's job? Right? So you gotta use your head and think about all these things, the different facets to it. So, whether or not I'm, okay, whether or not Willie Nelson or whoever, or Sarah Silverman or whoever can come out and say, I think we should be legal. That, you see what I'm saying? It's like, okay, good. It's not going to happen though. You know, as long as these black op social secret elitists are raking in trillions or whatever the drug trade amasses globally, it's not like they're going to be like, well, Sarah Silverman and Willie Nelson think it should weed should be legal, so I guess we have to just change our whole business operation then. And st let's ah, who wants that? Who wants that billion dollars we made last year? Ah, Sarah Silverman said she smokes weed. Willie Nelson wants to smoke weed and be legal. We don't want to. We don't want to tick off Willie Nelson and his fans, right? Let's just stop this. Like it's not going to happen. It's unless there was like a overwhelming majority to change the laws and. When's the last time an overwhelming majority got anything changed? Even though we, you know, we can all agree on a few things, it doesn't mean that our our masters over top of us, who enforce the law, you know, uh, the laws, uh, see fit to change it. So, with all that said, all I'm trying to get at is look at the damage that's done by the drug wars, the war on drugs, the endless money pit. Um, and look how it could all be avoided, or at least reduced, if the drug trading uh, was legal. All right, so with that said, kids, cover your eyes.
So this guy was a drug dealer and a part of a crew that was planning to wage war on another crew. It didn't work out so well for him, as you will see. And these are Mexican drug dealers from the rival crew standing behind him. And that's a knife in his hand, and he really is about to do what you think he's going to do. Give him a few punches, and then they slice his head off. And they cut it right off. And it's not a joke. They kill him right there. And they decapitate him. And, I mean, you can see the website there where you can see this type of stuff. Uh, let's pan over here to avoid some of the uh, pornography type stuff. <laughs> and move to the next uh, shot. Yeah, so they take his head right off. And, I, you know, they send a they're trying to send a message. Don't mess with whatever it is, La Familia or uh, La Zetas, they don't say. But you can notice while they're uh, while they're killing this guy that they have um, AK-47s, they have really nice rifles and body armor and uh, with the ATF getting caught with Fast and Furious admitting, yeah, we send, we send them over drugs to monitor, or send them over guns and all that to monitor them. You know, that's, and it was all under the direction of the White House. So there's your, uh, there's your hope and change for you. How's that hope and change working out for you? Your, you know, United States president will allow Mexican cartels to be armed, killing Americans and killing rival drug gangs. Here's another one, you know, take off your head, dismember you. Uh, the car this is a cartel shot from Mexico. Let's go back over here Avoid some porn and go to the next thing I mean you can most people probably That are watching this don't look this type of stuff up, and it's not like I spend my entire day uh, When I have the free time looking up crazy things coming out of Mexico but uh, You know this is something I've been sitting on for a while to say to talk about. This is, uh, as you can see, they're approaching a policia truck, and uh, it's been attacked. And of course, they kill the police officer. Now, if 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 uh, you know drugs like cocaine and, and heroin and and marijuana were legal, would stuff like that stop? I don't know, 100 percent. Would it be decreased? It you know you, it's got to be decreased. So, this is uh, clearly. Uh, a rival, sorry, a uh, Mexican police vehicle that has been assaulted by a drug cartel. And they kill the police and, you know, how long does this have to go on for is my question. I mean, these police have families and... I suppose you could say, well, they know what they're getting into when they join the police. And of course, there's police corruption as well to talk about. Some of these police are on the take or in on it. And uh, this is sort of what's continuing to go on in Mexico without any signs of getting better. <clears throat> Here is point blank execution of a drug smuggler. They ask him, Who do you work for? He says, For Vladimir Valdemar Alvarado, aka El Rufo, and Los Setas Drug Dealers Assassination Squad. 
What is your function? To shoot the PFS stands for Policia Federal Preventia, kind of like your federales, and to kill the people of the La Familia, and then they just shoot a point blank. Um, I'm not trying to give you reasons not to go to Mexico, by the way. I've got friends who take vacations there, and there's a lot of people that uh, have uh, nice things to say about Mexico. Alright, so this is a woman who, a woman lawyer who's been sliced up by the Bossetas, and this is apparently what she looked like beforehand. And you can clearly see her legs and uh, things. Uh, she's been dismembered, in short. And I've seen, you know, worse than that. And I mean, you can sort of see they're they're trying to make a point. They don't want the cops, you know. They don't want to be interfered with. They don't want rival gangs coming after them. So it's sort of like who can be more ruthless than the other one. This one's titled All Out War in Mexico. Con un contingente de policías federales chocó a balazos con un grupo de civiles fuertemente armados. Continúan, lo que usted escucha son disparos de arma fuego calibre de fusil. Bajas vinieron de ambos lados, a sus civiles BPT, llegando con... I suppose to whoever was offended by any of uh, those images, but trying to sort of illustrate my point and show that we need to be more sophisticated when we're thinking about the global drug trade and asking questions like, should drugs be legal or illegal. I mean, it's a bit more complicated and sophisticated than a simple question of should drugs be legal or illegal. I think that, you know, making marijuana, cocaine, and heroin legal uh, would probably lower a lot of the crime rates for people that are stealing and doing whatever as a result to get money for those drugs. Um, I think that it would put a lot of drug dealers out of business too, as well, so keep that in mind. I'm not sure what the answer is. If, if you would ask me, should drugs be legal or illegal? Actually, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what the answer would be, but the way things are operating right now with all those drugs I mentioned and LSD and all that being illegal. Meanwhile, salvia divinorum can be bought at Big B and there's no age limit. I, I couldn't uh, walk straight on that stuff, ne never mind operate a car or whatever, but that's perfectly legal and you don't have to be, you know, any sort of age to buy salvia divinorum. You know, meanwhile, acid has the same sort of properties but on a much different scale. That's a Schedule One drug and illegal. So, with all these drugs being illegal, you can sort of see the the global business being created out of it. The war of drugs, endless money pit, jail sentences and times. Uh, the United States is, has the largest prison system in the world, and uh, the fin uh, corporate fingers, heads of banks, and head uh, people in government have their fingers dipped in this. Uh, global drug trade. What was it? The president of Afghanistan, Karzai, his brother, was the largest opium dealer and now the, mil the military industrial complex in Afghanistan is guarding the opium because 
well, whatever reasons they're telling you, you can see what's the truth of it. They're involved in it. That's the bottom line. How many troops are involved uh, getting in on heroin now? I don't know. So that's something I really don't know too much about, but. It's a big issue, and the you can see the results and the effects of this being strictly illegal. And I think that the cons are outweighing the pros because of corruption in police and cor government corruption and because of the amount of money involved and the fact that no matter whether it's illegal or not you can't stop people from doing drugs whether it's illegal or not go explain that to your your friend who smokes weed or your your local drug dealer explain to him how it's illegal how are you doing this well he's doing it it doesn't matter whether it's illegal or not people do it <laughs> you know so some things to think about Thanks for watching, I'm Josh Rollbrock.